Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen.
invite you to pray with me the prayer of the day. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts 10, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar in all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with equity. The Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I find myself always in awe at God in general, but also Somehow, I'm still surprised and still in awe of the way that we put God into a box. And to be fair, it's not just us, not you and me, but humans have been putting God into a box since the very beginning. And today, we are reminded again of the ways in which humanity can so quickly be shocked and scandalized when God shows how quickly God can hop out of the boxes we create in our minds. For those gathered in our reading from Acts, it's the witness of the Holy Spirit pouring out in the middle of Peter's sermon. Shocking, to say the least, how the Spirit tends to interrupt us when we are in the middle of something important. But what astounds those gathered who are circumcised, which is to say in our Acts reading, for those who participated in the traditions of the Jewish faith, to see that the Holy Spirit refused to discriminate in her gifts of language and faith, to see that the Holy Spirit was not only blessing them, but the Gentiles too, 
That was what left them astounded, as our verses say, astounded. We are often astounded that the boxes we create for ourselves filled with ideas and people and assumptions are upended by God's Spirit in our midst. But Peter, even in spite of being interrupted, has been led by the Spirit down this path already. He's been given a shock to his system already in his reception of hospitality with the family of Cornelius previous to our verses today. Peter already knows that the box they created for God can never fit the unending love that God has for all people. And he's still kind of grappling with it, too. But Peter witnesses this along with everyone else, and he echoes the words of the Ethiopian eunuch without ever having heard them, and he opens up the waters of baptism to all those gathered, inviting all the promises of God's grace and love, inviting all these people in, to God's waters of baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And then in our gospel, Jesus once again astounds the disciples, mostly by telling them what he's already told them over and over again, whether or not they've heard it or have followed it. But Jesus tells them once again to love one another to wrap themselves in his love through God, that abiding and entangling love we talked about last week. He declares to the disciples that he is their friend, their friend. In the Greek, the word used is loved one, a chosen family. No longer servants, but friends, fully participating in the invitation Jesus gives to them, an invitation of love. For one another, for God, this abiding love that cannot be put into a box. And the disciples, I'm sure, were astounded by Jesus' words to them. I think the idea that their teacher, their master, is also their friend, calling them into this love and then calling them out to bear fruit, even if they've heard it before, it's still astounding to them. Now, I sort of mentioned it before, but I've spent a good part of my youth and young adulthood away from faith, away from church, away from the Judeo-Christian God. It's a long story, but it boils down to this. As a young person, I realized that my faith, my relationship with Jesus wasn't my own. I had inherited it from my family which is always a great place to start, but at 14 years old with pink hair and a lot of angst, for me it wasn't enough. When the Holy Spirit came and interrupted me in Seattle traffic one day after eight years of presence unknown in my life, when she astounded me with her holy presence in my little Honda Civic, God jumped out of the box I had made. The box of only being for my family, but not for me. The box of unreal. All the little walls I had built up around the idea of God were broken down in that moment. And a big part of that for me, what still manages to astound me in our reading today, is something I learned as a child and learned early on when I came back to faith. I didn't choose this. I knew that immediately. In that moment when I felt the Holy Spirit's presence, I was not happy <laughs> about it. It felt strange and weird and unexplainable, and it wasn't some big skies opening up miracle. I just had this sense that I wasn't alone, and I didn't know what to do with that. And if you knew me at the time, the idea that I suddenly had faith in God well, it was embarrassing. I was a pretty staunch, by that point, sort of agnostic. And the idea of faith, and particularly faith in the Jesus from my youth, sounded crazy to me. And so I knew 
that I didn't choose this. I didn't choose this faith. I didn't choose for the Holy Spirit to come to me. I didn't work for it. I didn't pray real hard. There was nothing that I did to choose the faith that I had, the relationship I now have with Jesus. And if it were up to me, I would have continued with my life with God in that not real box and never sought out this relationship, this friendship, this abiding, entangling love. What continues to be shocking is the reminder from Jesus to his disciples and to us, we didn't choose him. We didn't earn the love we received. We didn't, we didn't work for it. We aren't always the best people, and we definitely don't always follow Jesus's commandments to love one another. I think back to the moment where I first read Luther's small catechism as an adult and his what does this mean about the Holy Spirit and the creed that I cannot come to faith by my own work or merit but only through the gospel of Jesus Christ called by the Holy Spirit can I come to him and that has still rung true for me because even though we don't earn this love we don't work for this love and even though we often fail to follow jesus's commandment jesus still chooses the disciples anyway mistakes and all and jesus still chooses us you and me and the ever expanding invitation to all people Jesus hops all the way out of any box anyone can create for him and says, I chose you. You. As we hear Jesus talk about friendship with his disciples, as we hear Jesus tell his disciples that he considers them to be friends, not servants, but friends, loved ones, as we follow Jesus ourselves, as we hear Jesus call us friends in our reading today, as Jesus lays down his life for each and every one of us on the cross, Jesus takes that box we put God in to the cross and he bursts it open in his resurrection. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Stay in my love. Be wrapped up in my love. God, the creator of the entire universe, loves you. Jesus, the Son of God, loves you and calls you friend. Abide, remain, sit with those words, with that love. Just for a moment, sit with the words that the creator of the entire universe, that the Son of God loves you and chose you. Jesus chooses us for this abiding love to abide with, to stay with, to be wrapped up in. And Jesus describes this love as friendship, a relationship of loved ones. And this is a friendship of calling. Jesus calls his disciples and calls us into this abiding ministry of love together, a ministry of invitation, a ministry of mercy, a ministry of love, a ministry declaring that God doesn't fit into our boxes and never could, that God's love is for all. And we know this because God's love is for us. We didn't choose this. God chose us. And it's not about making sure that we do the right things so we avoid some kind of punishment. Jesus shows us that this is about responding to that love. Because this is about the love that is shared between God, the creator of the universe, Jesus, the Son, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, the Gatherer, and the Comforter. This is about that love and how the only way Jesus knows how to express the kind of love that he shares with God, that he shares with his disciples, that he shares with humanity, 
is to love all, to go to the greatest possible lengths with the cross, with his life, with his ministry, with his new life and resurrection. Jesus gives up everything and gives out everything in love for all of us. So Jesus does this because part of this love is that you don't know how else to respond but to share it. That is the response to being loved this hard by God. It calls us into a relationship of love that is constantly flowing, going in and out of us. This is the way that Jesus invites us to bear fruit, to share the kind of love that Jesus shares with us. Jesus bursts the boxes we create and calls us to share the kind of love and friendship that we are given. Maybe with somebody who needs that love and friendship more than you could ever know or imagine, whether that be reaching out to help someone in need, serving through different food and meal ministries, or calling someone who you haven't talked to in a while to catch up. Maybe it's reaching out to the person whose loved one has passed and just checking in, even if it feels awkward. Remembering all the firsts of that first year, that first five years. Maybe offering just a small sign of support, whether that be a card or a phone call. Maybe it's just in asking someone how they're doing and really meaning it. Maybe that's even someone at the grocery store, safely six feet apart, or maybe it's someone in your life who you know, who you often don't get too deep with. Maybe it's just sharing with someone how grateful you are that they exist, that they're in your life, even if it's just for that day. Sharing with someone that love of gratitude. The friendship Jesus offers us is a friendship that is meant to be shared. The love Jesus gives us is a love that is meant to be felt. It's meant to be proclaimed because this love, this friendship, it isn't by default. It isn't something that we choose to do or feel. We receive it because Jesus chose us. Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. You are chosen. I'm chosen. We are chosen. Even when we don't keep Jesus' commandments like we know we should or could, even when we don't listen or witness to Jesus' message of love, even when we feel a little fruitless in our friendships, in our relationships, in our lives, for all the times that we abide in Jesus' love and for all the times we fail to invite to share, to love, and to care. Jesus still chooses us. Jesus still chooses you for grace, for mercy, for love. Jesus still chooses us over and over again because God, the creator of the entire universe, loves you and sent the Son of God to free you, to save you, to love you, and to call you into this friendship that bears fruit. Jesus chose you, chose us, so we might abide in a fruitful love that won't fit in any box. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches. Today we pray for the Moravian Church, giving thanks for the life and witness of Nicholas Ludwig von Zizendorf, renewer of the church and hymn writer. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creating God, the earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love so that by their song, all creatures of land and sea and sky, burrowing and soaring, may call us to join with them in praise. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit, so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point us towards life-changing responses to these needs in our own communities. Gracious Lord, we pray this day for continued healing for Andy Sieplick and his eye, for Duty Vig following her fall as she looks forward to going back home again, for Bobby Wicklander as she continues treatment for Aaron and Karen Mace with their health issues, for Sherry Dish as she works toward her divorce settlement, for all caregivers as they care for those they love, Carol Fries, Elle Goodwin, Roxine Gratzer, Don Phelps, Janice Graham, and Whitney Bates. Bring comfort to Patty Wisney and her family as they mourn the death of her brother, Gordon Michelson. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. 
In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And I think I even have bread. Mm. Our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite you to pray with me the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you.
morning, I invite you to just take a moment of silence, of prayer, of receiving this body and blood of our Lord, of our vine, who entangles us in love. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and give you peace. Amen. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring, bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 